much shorter in length the pupa is. And so now this guy actually bound himself with poo. Okay, Keys Moths fans, this is David Fine. And what we're doing right now, we are raising two different things. We've got our Gonadonna Nutrix, our fruit piercing moth caterpillars that we found the other day on the pond apple. And as you can see, they're making a mess. And we've got our Brazilian skipper caterpillars that we are raising. And we are going to basically go in and see what's going on. It's actually been a couple of days since I've uh, put these guys in here. And let's, we're going to change them out. We're gonna get some food. I've got some pond apple here. I've got some lilies here. Some of this canna lily kind of thing that the Brazilian skippers eat. A uh, Latin name for the actual plant is in the description below. But as you can see, this isn't in water. And look what happens to leaves when they are out of water, just for like literally three minutes, they're starting to curl and dry out. So I need to move on getting this in. So now I've opened this up. Now the cool thing about this container is it's got an air vent built in, which I like because when you put a container full of water and you've got that big old massive amount of biomass, a lot of times if this was sealed, you would get a whole bunch of condensation. There's a little bit forming here, but the cool thing about this is there's not a whole lot of condensation. In fact, this is the appropriate amount of moisture in a container to keep healthy caterpillars. Uh, so there's, it's moist enough where there's a little, it's, it is moist and the, the leaves aren't gonna dry out, but it's not making the whole container sweaty because that would be conducive to disease. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look in here and there are two Brazilian skipper caterpillars in here. And it's been, I think two days since I've changed this out. This is my only stem. Man, it got yellow quick. Um, well, there's no caterpillars on the leaves, which let's see what's actually going on. This is my water pick here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually get these leaves in the water so that they stop drying out, curling up. But now we're gonna look in the bottom here and see what is going on with our caterpillars. And the cool thing is we may not need leaves because we've got what looks like a pupa here and there is a caterpillar left, but it looks like it may be pre-pupal, meaning it's going to start spinning its uh, silk pad to make its chrysalis here. So let's see, this actually came off. Let me see what's going on. Here's our caterpillar guys. Now, caterpillars turn colors before they pupate. And this caterpillar here was a deeper green. And it was a lot longer. And what happens is when a caterpillar, one of the signs when a caterpillar begins to go through its change and starts to think about making its chrysalis, uh, there's a couple indicators that you can see, and one of which is that there's usually some kind of a color change. And this guy is getting a little whiter in color, more of like a limey green coloration, uh, and, and it used to be a little bit of a darker coloration. And that's definitely a color change in this caterpillar, which indicates it's looking to make its chrysalis. The, the other indicator is when a butterfly caterpillar is going into its pre-pupil kind of stage, what happens to the body is not only does it change color, but it also condenses. So you can see that this caterpillar is kind of condensing itself and, it, and it's starting to kind of like crinch, crinch up its fat content and it's like starting to get smaller in length because when it sheds its skin, the pupa is usually smaller than the actual caterpillar. So uh, that sort of condensing of the body, overall body segment and overall body uh, length is typical of a caterpillar that's about to pupate. So very exciting because that means it looks like that this caterpillar is going to make its chrysalis probably the next day or two. 
and I am going to, well, I'm gonna pin that guy to that those leaves here in a minute. I'm gonna put him here on the, on the counter so I don't squish him. Now, the other one looks like it is already a pupa and it probably pupated on a leaf. Oh, it's still soft a little bit. All right. Oh, that's not good. All right, guys. So what happened in this guy? This is a pupa and it looks like it started to shed its skin, but then it stopped and it, it could have been that this, since there, were, there was not enough leaves in the container probably, it was probably making its pupa on this leaf and this guy probably ate him right, ate the leaves that this was actually pupating on. And so that's one of the mistakes that looks like it got made. I didn't keep enough food in there. So now this guy was sitting there in his pre-pupal position and you can't disturb them when they're in the pre-pupal position because if you do, you knock them off their, you know, their uh, silk pad, you knock them off their structure and then they, they might mess up. And so now this guy right here looks like the pupa fully formed, but the caterpillar skin did not come off all the way. And I might be able to scrape the caterpillar skin off. I'll work on that. I don't know, guys. It looks like it might be bleeding. We'll see. Okay. One of the problems with this, and I think one of the reasons why the caterpillar skin is going to need to come off is that the proboscis chamber of the skipper caterpillar actually extends from the head and extends all the way to the tip of the abdomen. So if there's any part of that chamber that gets caught up in the skin, when the butterfly tries to emerge, it might get stuck and won't be able to emerge. So I'm gonna try and do a little surgery on this and see if I can get the skin off so that the pupa can harden. Cause right now it's super soft. And if I put too much pressure on it, the skin will rupture. Cause let's see, it's very, very easy to kill a butterfly pupa when it's before it's hardened. So I'm gonna have to really pay attention to this and give it super, super gentleness in how I'm caring for it. So you can see how uh, this guy's starting to crawl again. Our pre-pupil caterpillar is starting to crawl. And that is the difference between a pre-pupil larva and a pupa. Look how much shorter in length the pupa is than the caterpillar. Um, when he starts to extend out, he's a lot longer than the pupa. So pretty cool. But next step is I'm going to clean this container out because that's all the frass or pet poop <laughs> feces that happened within 48 hours. So I'm going to get that done. And then I'm going to put um, a new piece of paper towel down the base. And then I'm going to get my lilies in here. I'm gonna put the, this container and I probably don't need two leaves because this caterpillar is going to be making its pupa soon. Um, but I'm going to take him. This is my caterpillar that I believe is pre-pupal. I don't think he's gonna eat anymore, but I'm going to rest him and let him crawl right onto the leaf itself. And then what I'm going to do with the pupa here, I'm going to do a little surgery on it and put it in a different container so that it doesn't get injured by its sibling again. So I'm going to put a lid on here. And again, this, and again, this got a little vent right here that I can open and there's enough air exchange where it keeps this container from sweating too much. All right, now moving on to our fruit piercing moths. And 
This is not a vented lid, as you can see. And you can see how the condensation on the side of the container is a little heavier on this one than it is on the other one. Now, the cool thing about these guys is when they make their pupa, first of all, let me see if there's anybody alive down here. You always gotta kind of see what's going on. So now the, the frass that's come down, it's been it's been over two days and they're starting to, frass starting to get moldy, but these guys, when they make their chrysalis and it looks like they're, they're all pupating now, they, what they do is they take their little mandibles and they cut pieces of leaf off and they they bind them around themselves and literally make a cocoon out of the leaves of their host plant. And so now this guy actually bound himself with poo. All that right there is poo. And it's it's starting to grow mold on it, so it's it's probably not the healthiest situation for him, but I'll try and scrape some of that off. But this one right here chose to bind himself with chunks of leaves of his host plant, pond apple host plant, and not poo. And so now there were five of them in this container. So let's look and see. Now here's another one. Here's number three. And he bound himself again with leaves, maybe a little leaves and a little bit of poo. And then here's number four. He bound himself with leaves. And there were five, and I don't see the other one in there. So I'm, I'm assuming that number five is down here. And that's what this guy is right here. So let's see if he's made his actual chrysalis yet inside the cocoon. And I'm going to try to open this up a little bit. See if he's still a caterpillar or did he make his chrysalis yet? Yes, I'm touching poo right now. Moldy, moldy poo at that. All right, so I'm just kind of scraping this off. And what are we looking at here, guys? So he surrounds himself with leaves and poo and surrounds himself with a wall of silk and there's the, well, there's the wall of silk right there. So I'm gonna try and continue to dig in, see if I can show you what's inside. Okay, let me see if I can pull up the, the front end of this and see if we can see what is going on. Oh, look at that, guys, look. The pupa's in there. All right, there's the chrysalis, guys. The chrysalis for the moth is inside of the silk wall and bound to the exterior of the silk wall are chunks of leaves, and in this case, frass pellets. And so that is what a moth does, or this fruit piercing moth. And so guys, what is the difference between a moth and a butterfly? Uh, a lot of people will look at a butterfly chrysalis and call it a cocoon. And that's actually a misclaimer or misnomer, or say, because a cocoon is actually the spinning, the silk, and whatever is attached to the silk, that moths will spin around the chrysalis. So both moths and butterflies make a chrysalis. Let me see if I can get this guy out. There it is. That is the chrysalis, guys, or the pupa of the fruit-piercing moth. And if we were to look at it, this is the abdominal section. And these are the segments of the abdomen going up and down here. And then, let's see, I'm gonna try and, he might be a little soft still. Looks like he just made his chrysalis. I'm gonna try and flip him over so you can see his face, yes. So right here, we have the wing pad. I'm showing you with the stem. And then right here is the head. And what you can see, kind of vaguely, you can see actually see the leg chambers and the proboscis chamber of 
the moth. So the, the, each of these little lines that go up the side in the middle here are leg chambers. And in the very, very middle going up the top is the proboscis chamber. And that's where the legs and proboscis will harden inside of those chambers of the pupa. And then on this side, there's another wing pad. So there's a, oh, he flipped all the way over. So this is the wing pad right here. Then the antenna chamber comes out all the way out on the outside. And then as we flip him over, we can start seeing the leg chambers and the proboscis chamber right in the middle and the head. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Now, like cleaning this container is gonna be pretty easy because there's nothing left in here. It's just uh, old paper towel. So we're going to let that go. And here, I'm gonna, I'm going to just make a paper towel bottom here, which is pretty simple now because all of our fruit piercing moth caterpillars are pupa. And there you have it. If we were to open up each one of these little little uh, bundles, we would find another chrysalis here, another chrysalis there. And guys, we are going to save this for another video when the fruit piercing moths emerge. But hope you enjoyed the video. We've got two different chrysalis here. We've got our Brazilian skipper chrysalis which I need to do a little surgery on, get the skin off. And we have our fruit piercing moth chrysalis and they are going to emerge here sometime in the next week. So I hope you liked the video guys. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up on the video and, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Click the bell for notifications. And uh, when you do that, you will get notified every time we put out cool new videos and show you these really cool things like we have here. Uh, these really neat things that very few people ever get to see. So uh, we also have a website, it's keysmoths.com and we have all of the butterflies and moths of the Florida Keys, all 600 species of moths and over hundred species of butterflies from the Florida Keys documented for you there. And until next time, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida and can't wait till these guys emerge. Take care guys.